WMSC's Local Live is supported by Club Garibaldi. Located at 2501 South Superior Street in Bayview. Open seven days a week, Club Garibaldi serves burgers, hot wings, and more. And features live music weekly. For more information and Club Garibaldi's live music events, visit clubgaribaldi.com. Horses tonight. Give them a warm welcome. Welcome. And uh, yeah, we've had them on the show before. They played at the Todd Ware Conference Center back when we used to do local live over there. And it's been since then, since they've been on. They've got new music to play for us. We're very excited. They've got a new album coming soon called My Mother the Moon. And a big tour coming up, too, uh, starting at the end of this month, uh, including a Milwaukee date on April 5th at Collectivo Back Room. So keep that in mind. And, uh, yeah, I think I uh, just want to remind the audience out there that there are note cards floating around on tables and everything. Uh, if you would like to ask Dead Horses some questions, write those questions on those cards and bring them up to us, and uh, we'll, we'll squeeze in as many as we can. Um, Without further ado, I think we're going to turn it over to Dead Horses for some live music here on Local Live. Thank you. 
much. How y'all doing tonight? All right, we're gonna move right on to another song if that's cool. All right, this one is called On and On. Desolate ain't done no wrong So I ride along and I write a song Been going on for way too long And on and on WMSC is local live. We are live down at Club Garibaldi, and we've got a live audience here for Dead Horses. Uh, sounded great, those first couple tracks. Thanks. Thank you. All right, well, let's get to talking about your new record while well, you're tuning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I can, I'm, Multi I can multitask. Multitasker, yes, yes. Sarah. Okay, well, actually, first, let's go around and introduce everyone on the mic so people who are listening on the radio tonight and also our audience knows who's who. Cool, cool. Well, uh, to uh, my left, which would be stage right, and to you in radio land, that means nothing, uh, is Daniel Wolf. He's playing the upright bass and he's singing tonight. Yeah. 
Uh, my name is Sarah Voss. I'm playing guitar and singing. And on my other side, this is Mr. Ryan Ogburn playing the mandolin, bazooki, and the vocals. Now, is this the crew that's going to go on tour for this whole string of dates coming up? It'll be us three as well as a, a percussionist, and his name is Jamie Gallagher. He's from Chicago. Cool. Very nice. All right, so um, the record's coming out really, really soon, and we've been listening to a, a little bit of it, and there's... There's like a very reflective tone to the record. Um, you even use authors like Robert Frost to employ these elements even further. Do you, do you turn to books pretty often to draw out these feelings when it comes time to write? Uh, yeah, I think reading for me is, is part of just my general practice of living. So oftentimes, you know Robert Frost's poem, his poem Birches inspired a song that we're gonna play later tonight called Swinger in the Trees. And interestingly enough, I thought his poem was very reflective as well. He was kind of uh, reflecting on his childhood and living. He was from New England, so kind of New England winters, which I think are comparable to Wisconsin. Wisconsin, And uh, so it was similar to me. Um, and I think it fit in very well with the record because I think the whole record is, is a lot of reflection on uh, past childhood and adolescent stuff for me, as well as um, things influenced by more current travels that we've been doing. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's a, like a really <clears throat> lyrical uh, bunch of songs you have written, so. Sure. It, sh it shows. <laughs> um, I was gonna ask, if, do you read and write equally, kind of at the same time, or? Um, I think I write more often than I read. I haven't been reading as much, I would say, as other times in my life, but. Yeah, you know, social media, it'll eat up your time. Watch out for that, everybody. Speaking of writing, I'm gonna ask the audience if you've got any questions for this, this fine group up here, write them on down on those note cards and bring them on up. We wanna ask your questions for the band too, so don't forget. Um, so sort of talking about uh, digging back into your childhood and stuff like that, um, can you tell people a little bit about like what happened to you and your family when you were 15 years old that kind of like prompted some of the, sure. your songs? Yeah, I think, uh, I think kind of the central story that um, influenced a lot of who I am today and is influencing a lot of my, my current writing um, would be a lot of themes like, um, well, I grew up in the church and uh, when I was a teenager, my family got asked to leave the church and you know that was a that was a very difficult thing. It had a lot to do with with politics, as many things in life do. Um, mental illness is a huge thing that I guess the reason that I feel so okay talking about it in this context is um, I feel very passionately about kind of destigmatizing it because it is a part of every family. And I had an interviewer ask me last week. He said something along the lines of, you know, artists, uh, 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 artists often come from rough childhoods, but seems like yours was worse than most, wouldn't you say? And I just was like, no, I would not say that. Um, but I know, right? That was weird. Seems like kind of a presumptuous thing to ask you. It, it wasn't, it wasn't, because I think if you look at, if you look at the story of, of kind of some of the things that happened to my family, uh, my brothers were suffering from mental illness, um, other things were going on, and, and they kicked us out, you know, and we lost our home, we lost the community that we grew up in because the church was very much that, um, and we lost our insurance. My dad lost his job. You know, a lot of things like that. And th that is the story. And there were, there's a lot of other parts to that story as well. But that, that was very, very difficult. Um, but it also increased, you know, it really taught me a lot about having compassion for other people and, and trying to understand uh, people. I, I think if there's one, one message that I could convey to everyone, it's empathy. Because if we could all, if we could all put put ourselves in each other's shoes a little bit more, the world would be a much better place. <laughs> Amen to that. Um, is there anything that has happened in your life, like very recently, that led up to the writing of this album that sort of 
made you dig back into that, uh, that's th those things from your past, or is it just kind of something that's always there? Honestly, partially coming to a healthier and happier place in my life has allowed me to be able to look at things a little clearer, um, as well as the current political climate, which kind of leads really well into the next song. Um, <laughs> yeah, y'all laugh a little bit, because you know what I'm talking about. Um, but I've, I've always been interested in poverty and the disparity of wealth amongst everybody and uh, what it really means to be poor and how it's just, it's more about just m than just money. Um, if you give people their most basic needs like food and shelter and healthcare, you know, they're in a much better place to be happy and healthy, but those are not just the things that you need to be happy and healthy. But um, yeah, if that's okay, we'll lead into the next song. This one's called uh, American Poor. Sounds good. There's a new generation of poor Faces clean and their eyes are pure Empty stomachs but their mouths are full American proud, American poor They send you a free book every year Discount for your diagnosis, dear. They give you pills to take away your fears. American poor, American here. Left my innocence in the sea with all the things that I make believe. Shadow thing, and it's just me. Make believe, make believe. in the sea with all the things that I make believe shadow thing and it's just me make believe, make believe there can be no greater thing than to love a stranger people who serve us life Cause nothing would ever really come of it It's fair when you say it's fair It ain't be so, it's not there American proud, American poor Left my innocence in the sea With all the things that I make to Ryan right here for taking the seat that had <laughs> our mandolinist Ryan's ch leftover cheese curds. Nobody was yeah, sitting help there. Yourself. That spot was wide open. You took it. Uh, you all ready? This song is called Brothers. Don't cry for me, lover. Don't shed a tear Let your laughter ring out And I can hear it in my ear You love the ocean Swim. 
the bones But I still drown in it Sea lover, sorrow follows me around And it picks me
we're going to play you a, that was kind of an older tune for us. We're going to play you a, a newer one now, if that's cool. It's called uh, My Mother the Moon. Listening to Dead Horses on Local Live. That was My Mother the Moon, title track from their album that's coming out really soon. Um, we've got some audience questions in a moment, but first, I have a question about that song you just played. Sure. <laughs> okay. I might have an answer. All right, cool. That sounds good. Um, I wanted to know if the title of that song um, kind of is a commentary on the state of your connection to your immediate family. Ah, no, <laughs> but um, I can certainly, what do you mean? 
Because the moon is often seen as a distant thing. Sure. Kind of. sure, sure. And it's also seen as many other things, too. Like, you know, you speak about harmony in the lyrics. A lot of people feel in harmony with the moon. Sure, like, sure. It could mean anything. Sure, <laughs> sure. It could sure. mean go either way. Yeah, um, I think part, part of the reason um, also that we decided to name the record My Mother the Moon and kind of have a reference to the moon, um, I, I, I had the uh, pleasure of going to see the, the lunar eclipse um, from a place where you, you know, of the, uh, t what do they call it, totality? You know, they had the fuck, sorry. <laughs> they, had the sh <laughs> they had the shirts and stuff, you know, all the gimmicky stuff. But I, I would say being able to see the full eclipse, um, it's coming again soon, I think in the 20s. Um, I, I highly recommend it. It was just absolutely, the coolest thing I've ever seen with my eyes, absolutely hands down, just unbelievable. Um, and I think I'm, I'm very interested in the way that, that the earth and the environment, and even, even the local geograph, uh, geography of, of where you live, how that affects you, whether it's like the people around you or the actual, you know, living by a big lake or living in a beautiful, uh, like living in the driftless region or something, what that does to you, what the moon does to you too. Um, I don't think it, I think it's easy to think of that as kind of like a, a hippie concept, but ask someone who works in childcare, and they'll tell you, they will, they'll say on the full moon, you know, people, people get a little bit weird. Um, so that, that was really more of, of, of where that s song came from, kind of almost a place of uh, like homage and just great respect for uh, the way that the, the, the earth and everything, how that, that affects us. I like that answer. Thanks. <laughs> Good one. All right, Cal, you got an audience question? Sure, we've got a couple. Um, here's one. Other than Milwaukee, what city are you most excited to play in and why? Ooh. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Dan what his answer is on that one. Dan, where are you, where are you excited to go? Oh. Um, all of them? I don't know. It's hard to pick just one. Cop oh, out. Yeah, that was a cop out, wasn't it? I would have to say I'm very excited to play down in Florida. Um, we've never played there. Um, just kind of want to see what it's about. I don't know what the live music is like down there. I'm sure it's good. But we, uh, we have a couple of really sweet gigs coming up there, and I'm excited to go down there. Cool. All right, I've got a two-part question. This is the very first question we got. Um, this person wants to know, what was the inspiring thought behind the song Old Soul? Ooh, that's an oldie. Who asked that question? Raise your hand now. Oh, I know, it was you guys, okay. <laughs> Old Soul, man, that, that's, that's an older one of ours. Um, I think, you know, I wrote that when I was probably like 22 or 23, I'm 30 now. Um, and I think coming from that place, just being so used to being called an old soul, like as a young person, and how that could, I, I somehow equated that to some of the feelings of, of um, <laughs> maybe this is an exaggeration, but torment, you know, like the feelings of like understanding uh, certain depths of sorrow that come along with depths of joy as well, but, and, and the, the kind of, the way that that can feel like a burden, being an old soul. Um, but as I have grown older, I've also learned how great of a blessing that can be as well. <laughs> yeah, nothing more specific than that, because honestly, I can't remember. <laughs> I'm getting um, old. <laughs> well, hopefully you're not too old to remember your favorite on-the-road story, because that's oh. what they wanted to also on know. On-the-road story. Well, I got one. There, I feel like, Ryan, that you're probably, you might be in the same place as me, so I, I might take your help telling this story, but uh, we were in Arizona, and we had a day off, and oftentimes on our days off, we like to go hiking, if possible, especially on our last fall tour, so we had been tipped off. We were playing in Flagstaff, and everyone in Flagstaff said, go to Sedona. It's some of the best hiking you'll ever have, and certainly it, it, that hike was maybe one of the most beautiful I've ever taken. But uh, so it was all four of us in the band hiking. And for the most part, you, know, you have to keep in mind we're together all the time. 
we're in the van, everyday driving, and then we get to the venue and do the sound check together. And then we usually have dinner together. And then we play the show together. And then we drink together. And then we go to the hotel and we all sleep in one room together. <laughs> <laughs> so when we hike, we're hiking together. And, but there were, there were points in time where, you know, we also give each other space pretty naturally. And so there'll be times when someone kind of runs ahead or someone falls behind. And this specific hike, there had been signs posted when we parked saying you have to be back by this hour um, or the parking lot closes. So we go and have this incredible hike and we wanna go farther, but we know we better make it back to the van. We don't want it to get towed, that would be a big deal. So we decide, and we had two sets of keys. We have one set of keys to the person that's gonna like run, right? And well, we all started kind of running. Me and Ryan and Jamie did. And somewhere along the line, you know, we didn't really know where Dan was. And, but that's not that big of a deal. It's kind of like a thing. Like somewhere along the line, we're gonna make t-shirts that say like, where's Dan? Because that happens all the time. Do you wanna, you wanna keep telling the story, Ryan? It gets better. So as the sun is setting and it's getting darker, uh, we realize we have not the slightest clue how to get back to the parking lot. Um, and we're just making guesses as to which fork and the path to take. And I'm like, hey, I got service. I'll just text Dan which way to go. Well, little did we know, Dan didn't have his phone with him. So we run back to the van. We're out of breath, but the parking lot's still open. And uh, just jokingly, I said, so what's, what's the phone call to uh, Dan's wife gonna be like? So, uh, hey, Rebecca, we're doing great. We kind of lost Dan. And then at this point, I get a text from Dan's wife saying, is everything okay? <laughs> and I'm like, um, I text her back right away. I'm like, yeah, why? <laughs> I'm like, oh, uh, it's, and it was getting dark. Like, that was actually the scary thing. And Dan, you want to tell the rest of the story from here? Yeah, so I ended up just finding a, the nearest parking lot, and I found a nice little old lady with a dog. And she gave me a ride into town to a, a nice Mexican restaurant. And I, I just had a couple Dos Equis until they came and picked me up. <laughs> so. that, that was epic. Thanks for that question. I think uh, we're going to turn it over to you guys for some more music on that oh. note before we run out of time. All right, this is called Darling Dear. Children swimming in the leaves I can't quite recognize 
what you think Another song from the new record. This one is called A Petal Here, A Petal There. Thank you all for being so awesome in the audience tonight.
WMSC is local live with Dead Horses, and uh, I think we're going to squeeze in a couple more audience questions here, if you don't mind. Um, who would you like to collaborate with in the distant future or open for? Uh, probably Bob Dylan. <laughs> Anybody else? No hesitation. <laughs> What about, what, what about you guys? I'm, I'm curious what you, you would say, Dan and Ryan. Sarah Voss and Ryan Ogburn. <laughs> oh, definitely. Oh, right now. Thank you. What about you, Ryan? Actually, we're going to do honest, it no. next to her. Uh, one of my favorite bands that I'm really happy to that we get to play a show with, uh, Mandolin Orange. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's okay. <laughs> You're good. I'm gonna have you read this question because there's a drawing that goes with it. Oh. Right. And it's more effective with the drawing. Oh. Huh. Here you go, Dan. <laughs> I think you would answer this better than me. When you put your fancy pants on, what do they look like? <laughs> and then there's a drawing of a person wearing pants. Wearing pants. I, I have no answer. I don't know. This? <laughs> These are the fanciest pants I own, people. <laughs> That's my... <laughs> For the record, he's wearing blue jeans. <laughs> Thanks for all the great questions so far. Audience, you've been awesome. We're gonna turn it back over to our, our weird questions. <laughs> Cal, go ahead. Um, this is one I was kind of wondering about. If there are any um, like common misconceptions about like rural Wisconsin life that you would like to like, you know, oh. debunk for people? Well, often like when we play out of the Midwest, I'll say, hey y'all, like we're from Wisconsin. What do y'all think about Wisconsin? And they always say cheese, Packers, and no. ew, winter, pretty much. But I wouldn't say those are myths to debunk. I think those are all pretty true. Everything that you've ever heard about Wisconsin is true, in other words. <laughs> all right, I guess I have a couple Wisconsin-related questions. Oh, good. Uh, well, what is your favorite thing about being from Wisconsin? The water. I love the water here. I think we're really blessed. Um, yeah, the water. Especially Milwaukee. Um, I think there is a, a very hardworking ethic that's still very prevalent here in the Midwest and in Wisconsin, and also kind of a kindness that people feel that they owe to each other, and I do think we owe that to each other. So. That's it. Absolutely. Um, I also, there's kind of a trend in modern bluegrass, I'm sure you're aware that like, people will take, you know, goofy covers from different genres and do them. It's like, seems like all oh, yeah. the bluegrass band. Do you guys ever goof around on some silly covers or is that something you try to resist? Um, we do that from time to time. I think we used to do it more often. Like we used to do Hungry Like the Wolf by Duran Duran. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's not gonna happen. We might, we might, we might pull something like that out of our sleeves later when we're off the air. All right. <laughs> Good uh, inspiration for people to actually come down to the shows, right? <laughs> we like that. Hurry on over, and you can hear it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have uh, three songs left for us, correct? Yes, sir. I think we should probably get to Let's those. The more music, the better. Cool. All right, one Thank more set much. from Dead Horses here on Local Live. Thank Every day, take it. 
this next song that we're about to play here, I actually wrote upstairs. <laughs> mm. Once upon a time, I lived above Club Garibaldi. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> all right. All good? It's called Modern Man. Show me a 
And that's a that's called a bazooki that you're hearing over here from Mr. Um, Ryan Ogburn. Is, is this last one a really short one or is it a longer one? Because if uh, it's, <laughs> I don't know. You, don't you know. can just cut us off in the middle of it if you got it <laughs> on the radio. If you're interested enough, you better hustle on over to Club Garibaldi. That's that's correct. I think we're gonna have to wrap it up since we are at the top of the hour. We want to thank you all for coming out here. It is 7.01, and you're tuned into 91.7 FM WMSC Milwaukee. We are a listener-supported broadcast service of the Milwaukee School of Engineering. This has been Local Live, and uh, tonight's edition of Local Live is supported by a donation from Club Garibaldi. It's located at 2501 South Superior Street in Bayview, where we are right now. Club Garibaldi's offers burgers, wings, a full bar, and a rotating live music schedule. More info at clubgaribaldi.com. And Local Live is a production of WMSE Radio, broadcast tonight from Club Garibaldi, as I mentioned. Local Live is produced by me and Aaron and engineered by Billy Cicerelli and Club Garibaldi. Thanks to our live studio audience for participating tonight. You guys were amazing. For upcoming guests and archives of past Local Live performances, visit WMSE.org and tune in again next Tuesday at 6 p.m. for another edition of Local Live with Tarek Sabar. And don't go anywhere, because Dead Horses here has more stuff for you, so stay in those seats. We'll see everyone else next week. Mm -hmm.